Welcome back, all you fabricant fleshbags, to the super, not funny show, Reviews. And today we're going to be reviewing episode five of Moon Knight, entitled The Asylum. And that's coming to you from Disney+. Plus. So, was it good? Was it bad? And should you be watching? Well, we get to the penultimate episode of Moon Knight. I, it's can you believe this? It feels like we just started watching this show. I guess technically we did, but only six episodes, uh, and we get to the fifth one, and uh, it's called the Asylum for for obvious reasons. Because last time we were uh, watching the show, show uh, Steve, Stephen, and uh, Mark met face to face in what appears to be some kind of mental, I guess mental uh, uh, plane or something like that, and it looks like an insane asylum. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this whole episode is really about them, I guess, coming to grips with what's going on. You know, in the previous episode, Lottie, they were like, oh, you know, is this real? Is it? Is he really in an insane asylum? Was any of that stuff real at all? And, yeah, yeah you know, I guess they answer that here, right? Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, Lottie, what did you think about the episode? <laughs> this This episode was deep, man. I mean, I was cycling in the middle of the episode, getting the good because I just bought a new cycle. And I was mm-hmm. build, I built it before. That's why it took me a little while to watch this episode, and I was getting in a good workout. But when I got halfway halfway point, I got off the cycle, and I was just in deep into this episode because, man, the amount of the strings that they pulled you on. And they pulled you in so many directions. You wanted to hate this character. You want to be mad at this character. You want to feel bad for this character. You want to feel bad for this character. You want to feel upset for this character opening up this door and this door and that door. It was so many emotions. This is probably... You see, you almost forget. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Be absolutely honest with you. This is the best Marvel has ever done with a backstory, in my opinion. Since the MCU has taken over, I have never seen a backstory that I actually felt. Like, I felt it. Mm-hmm. Like, most of the time with the backstories, I was just like, oh, it's sad, but it's like, they it didn't do a great job of pulling me in. But, man, the actors... All the actors involved, which was just really just one guy. Yeah. <laughs> but God, I mean, I you forget that this is a Marvel movie, honest. I mean, a Marvel TV show because I mean, I've never felt like this watching a Marvel TV show, honestly. Right? Yeah, it's. I think this this uh, episode was interesting for the yeah for the fact that yes, it's more or less a one man show. Uh, it's it is Oscar Isaac acting against himself, but you're right. This is probably the deepest ca- uh, character backstory that the MCU has produced thus far. Uh, a f- traumatic, a, such a traumatic childhood that that eventually created Stephen Grant, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Spector. Oh, and we, you know, the question is answered. Who's the real? Who's the real person? And you know, Mark Mark is the real person, and he creates Stephen to endure kind of a, a brutal, I guess a brutal abusive relationship with his mother, which, yeah. and of course, you know, because Steven doesn't have to endure that, he, you know, he has a better relationship with his mother. And you, you know, you see, uh, you know, some of the, the mental uh, trauma that causes Mark to do that, you know, how he blames himself for his brother's death and, uh, he couldn't never reckon his mother would never forgive him was always just blaming him and and all that stuff that that led to this you know these other uh, this other character to come out um I also I also uh, think that them set you know centering everything around the fact that you know they have to come together and figure out their their whole mental situation in order to to actually get out there and stop Harrow. So we, cause I've been wondering like, what's that, what's the actual, what is the actual like problem that they're trying to deal with in this one? And, you know, 
it, which it actually sort of makes me feel a little, I guess I'm a little concerned about the finale. I because, feel like the finale is not going to be what you think it is. I think it's going to be either a, it's going to be a cliffhanger. It's not going to finish. They're clearly working on season two or this might get a movie. It's clearly yeah, not going to be, you know, this I, is not going to end. It's just I, I haven't heard any any rumors of they're looking for a season two. Oscar Isaac doesn't have an ongoing contract with Marvel. What kind of gets me is that I'm afraid that we're, they're going to do a WandaVision. Where we're going to have a pew pew or a punchy fight to resolve everything. Well, really, most of the drama here has been a mental battle or and then a, eventually a mental partnership between Mark's you know, two dominant, uh, his two dominant personalities. And I, I also think that we have seen, I th also think that, and uh, we saw the third personality that was never named. Because, you know, remember when, when he was looking all beat up and had a broken nose and everything? Uh, bloody yeah. nose. I do believe that that was the third personality because at the time, Mark and Steven were both, you know, talking to, uh, to uh, what, what, Towerette, the, the hippo goddess. Mm -hmm. So, that you know, there's some. I think I think there's some room for uh, for more intrigue and in interesting things. But I mean, most of this episode was really about Mark sort of coming to grips with his his past, you know, his traumatic past, and making peace with Stephen. And unfortunately, you know, Stephen, of course, in, in the way you, I, you know, he went out like like a hero, but. <laughs> I was also sad to see him go, to be honest. I was really, yeah. really quite sad uh, with an understanding that Steven was the best of Mark. Is that, yeah. is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. uh, and the loss of him is, I feel, is significant. Yeah. Um, uh, but since this was mostly, this was mostly a, a sort of a backstory filling in episode, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a ton of action. Even the action we got was very, I thought it was quite lackluster. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, the action wasn't as great, but there are like two things that I, I wanted to comment on, like, in the uh, episode. One, I'm just going to have to say, Mark's father failed him. Oh, I mean, yes. I'm just being. Uh, how do you stay with the woman that you know is beating your son mentally? In a mo how do you let that happen? Like you just let it happen, right? Like I'm just amazed that the woman still lives with them, mm -hmm. and I'm just saying, like, wow, he, the father is like, and it's it's a switched role. This is this is one of the things that Marvel decided to do instead of it always being the father who is abusive and the woman's afraid to leave the relationship. The woman's abusive, and what that tells me, the she. It's always been abusive. She's probably been abusive to the father before the two boys were born. You know, well, I feel like that because he, if he, if she was, if this is something that he's never seen before, I felt like the father would have left. He's used to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, obviously he loved her. So it was, he couldn't just, he didn't want to just abandon her. I, um, yeah, it was, and that, that whole little, that whole bit was very, very tough and just seeing just seeing mark go from a regular kid to like a kid with severe you know mental diff difficulties was was tough uh i did oh yeah. I, I by the way i wanted to shout this out too because I, I was so happy to see that I, there's some of the stuff that made me very happy and one of them was the fact that they fully leaned into uh mark the fact that mark is jewish like, and yes. I mean, like, they didn't, no, he's completely, you know, I was wondering if they were going to actually touch on that, and they absolutely did, and that's awesome. I, I think that's, the thing is, is that, you know, the MCU is full of, of many heroes from all sorts of walks of life and everything, and it was just there. It, it wasn't called to attend, you know, it made sense to, to show what was happening, and I really, really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I also really liked Tawaret, the the hippo hippo goddess. I thought, oh, yeah. she, I thought whoever did the voice acting, they were uh, spot on. Just I've yeah. and I loved the heck out. All the mannerisms were great. 
Um, I just like how she screamed after they, when they were screaming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. one. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say one more thing that I also noticed, and I ha I actually went back to the first episode. That scene actually was from the first episode. Remember the part where he fell over and then Stephen took back over and he picked up the phone. And was like, "Yeah, mom, it happened again. I woke up on this thing." That was from the first oh, episode. Okay, that's yeah, because oh, I I noticed it because when he that that said when he passed by that Mercedes that looked very familiar after mm -hmm. the episode ended. Went back to the first episode. That happened in the first episode. Right. So, uh, I, I'm I want to say one of my I mean. My, to me, this episode wasn't. I don't think it was great. I think the storytelling was was really good, but the actual yes. execution, I don't think was was great. Uh, it was a letdown from the previous episode, and also big negative points for no Layla. How dare you <laughs> not have Layla in this? Like, ugh. so I'm really honestly, when it comes to his past, that is kind of. It is strange that she has, she's not a, she's not an actual like pivot point in his past where maybe he started getting better because remember for because like he said there was a there was a long time that Stephen wasn't around yeah and it was probably because he didn't need her I mean need him. You know, he st Steven started coming back after his mom passed away. That's why I was like, I kind of feel like that was kind of a bad way. It kind of, they kind of, maybe she, maybe the actress was busy. You know what I mean? That, that when they were filming, who knows? Well, I mean, the episode really was just about uh, Mark getting his mental uh, space together. So I get why she wasn't in it. I just, I just personally am just don't like when she's not in the, in the episode. So like, just... If we're gonna make a Moon Knight season two, there better be a lot of Layla in there. Cause dang it, that's I'm, I'm showing up for that. Cause she kicks ass and she's awesome. So mm -hmm. uh, just you know, I imagine she's gonna figure in quite a bit in the next episode. But we shall see. Um, I guess uh, so. I you know I said I think the episode was good, not great, and I'm hoping for I'm hoping against hope that the next episode is not gonna be a uh, you know a typical Marvel ending. So. Prove me wrong, Moon Knight. Prove me wrong. So, <laughs> uh, all right. I, I guess that's all of our thoughts on this episode. Uh, what do you guys think about the episode? What do you think about what we had to say? Get down to the comments. Let us know what you're thinking. And of course, you can always hit us up supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. And uh, let's talk about this show. All right, all you fabricating the flashbacks. Thanks once again for joining us on this review. Come back next week for the finale. Our review of the finale. Until then, I've been Mode Poupe, your resident fabricant and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace.